Hello. Often I get asked about the relationship between science and religion. Now, that means that we have to be, we have to be very clear about what we mean. I, in my previous life, as I say, I was a mathematician, and I studied uh, all kinds of some wonderful things in geometry, and some of those things are applicable in modern physics, and some of them are rather more esoteric. But one thing that I've, I've come to, to understand is that mathematics is not a science in the way that other people think of science. What do you think about it? Do you see lab coats and test tubes and lasers and telescopes and all kinds of apparatus? Perhaps you do. Perhaps that's what you think of when you think of science and scientists. You think of doctors and vaccines and petri dishes, that sort of thing. Well, those are sort of very empirical sciences. They do, they, they do science by experiment. And mathematics isn't like that. Mathematicians are very, very much... Um, they're bound to blackboards and pieces of paper and computer simulations. Mathematical science is clearly very different from the physical sciences. And so that leads us to wonder, well, what is science? Well, there is no one science. Science is a whole host of things. Science is um, essentially knowledge. And there are different types of knowledge. We can talk about social sciences, for example. We can talk about the sciences whereby we make um, uh, observations and predictions about how people behave in social situations and what the causes are. There are uh, physical sciences, such as physics, where we uh, explode um, rockets on asteroids to see if we can move them out of the way. Um, there are chemical and biological sciences where we, whereby we create vaccines. And mathematics isn't like that. And then there is, are the theological sciences. Indeed, St Thomas Aquinas um, regards the, physical, uh, the theological science as being the supreme Science. Now, why does he say that? Well, he says every science has a subject matter. So, uh, biology has the subject matter of life, living creatures. Uh, chemistry has the science of chemicals and compounds and things like that. That's things that are under, under study. And physics studies atoms and molecules. And you can see that there's sort of a hierarchy going on because... Biological organisms are also chemical organisms. And chemical, organi uh, and chemical uh, interactions have physics behind them. And physics um, is, is informed by and informs mathematics. There's a little hierarchy going on. So the subject matter of one is being studied in the other. Well, St Thomas Aquinas says, well, what's the... Uh, that's why theology is, is the greatest science, because it has, under its means of study, n no one else but God himself. So that's why science, the theological science, is the greatest science of all. So when you say... Um, that science is science opposed to religion. Well, the question doesn't really start, stops making sense, really. Because in religious circles, we, we un try and understand things about God. And how do we understand things about God? Well, we understand things about God by, by what he reveals to us. And the way we do that is to, to look at what revelation we've been given, and... Um, 
what has God said about himself? And so we look and we can see the world around us and we can make inferences. We can use the designer argument for the existence of God and say, well, um, uh, just as a watch, this is Paley's argument, because watch has the, experience, the, the appearance of being designed because there's a watchmaker. That, that, that infers the existence of a watchmaker. Well, everything around us seems to have some order. There are laws of physics, there are laws of mathematics, there are laws of chemistry. Everything seems to be ordered, and so that points to the existence of someone who puts them into order, namely God. But, of course, that's not a, um, as it were, a knock-down argument. And, indeed, um, we, we can't always uh, make knock-down arguments at all. There has to be an element of faith involved. Um, so... To try and infer the existence of God from the design, it's convincing for some, but not convincing for others. So, nature in itself is not um, a, a, a way of studying God. That means that there has to be something else. There has to be something else that God reveals about himself. And that's why, as Christians, we have a historical person of Jesus Christ. And we know that he exists. Um, we know that he exists as a human being. And then we're faced with the dilemma, do we accept what he says as being true? Or do we accept it as being false? Or do we accept it as being something else? misunderstanding, allegorical, something like that. So we, we are faced with history, and we also are faced with the testimony that people have written about God, and that's why we have Holy Scripture. And Holy Scripture isn't, isn't good enough in the sense that people can change the words, and people do change the meanings of words. And that's why we have tradition. We look at what people were saying at the time and how that's grown and changed and become it transmitted the truth of the gospel through time. And then we have reason because it enables, helps us to join the dots, as it were. Um, and what turns out to be correct deduction gets uh, turned into, into tradition. The doctrine of the Holy Trinity is exactly like that. Um, the doctrine of the Trinity is not explicitly found in the Bible, but it is d deducible. And so it's, it's led reason, an academic study, from the Church Fathers, studying the Scriptures, thinking about the revelation that's been we've been given and it's it becomes quite clear that what's reasonably deduced from scripture is correct and that's how we've got the the seven ecumenical councils so we've got scripture tradition and reason there so what about empirical science where does that fit in um, and the answer is, well, it's not a theological, um, it's not a theological d tool, because we can't deduce anything about God from it, because God is not something that you can put under the microscope, so you can't be under the physical uh, uh, sciences, and it's not a theorem to deduce mathematically, so it's not in that scope. And you can ask, well, what about human beings? Well, there you have another little problem, because what you can do is you say, well, um, human beings are completely material, and therefore completely understandable using physics. And then you lose the idea of the dignity of, God, uh, of, dignity of human beings, the, the idea of the mind as being something that doesn't fit into the um, scientific, the empirical science uh, understanding. Indeed, you, you, you can't equate brain waves on a um, computer screen with the thoughts that are being thought.
So, human beings can't be reduced to physical processes, nor can they be, nor can you completely disassociate them from being physical things, because we, we are physical beings. We, we, our bodies are physical and therefore obey the laws of physics. And so, while science may give us ways of um, utilising the world around us, they don't give us any theological um, development of the world around us. Human beings remain human beings. It means that every human being has a mother and a father. And every human being has a life. And it then, ta it then takes God, the existence of God, for us to realise that human life has a worth that goes beyond this world. That we were created for a purpose. And so I rather think that science and religion, they're not op in opposition. They don't touch each other, really, properly speaking. One can be used as a tool to make life um, more um, bearable. It has more different, uh, better cures, better ways of dealing with the world. But it doesn't actually touch who humanity is and who is intended to be at the hands of Almighty God. So... God bless you. God bless you if you are struggling to see the relationship between science and religion, particularly if you're being pressured by scientists to give up your faith. God bless you if you are struggling to see God in science, that you may see how God can use science as a tool to to make life better for, for, for human beings. And God bless you that you may enter into perfect knowledge of God in that last day. God bless you, and please pray for me.